Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Nerdy Multiverse, and finally another breakdown. It's been a while, but today we will be breaking down and giving our initial thoughts on episode one of the second season of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. Of course, following Daryl on his journey in France. However, this season actually has a sort of subtitle to it as well, being the Book of Carol. As now we have both the stories of Daryl and France and Carol searching for Daryl this season. And eventually, they will once again be intertwined. Anyways though, this episode is titled La Gentille des Estrangers, and pardon my absolutely terrible French, but in English, this title means The Kindness of Strangers. And this episode begins sometime after the ending of the first season, as for Daryl goes, as we see Laurent being trained to fight against walkers on that same beach that they were surrounded on in season one. Laurent is obviously still far from reaching any sort of success in combat, and he needs Daryl to still help him. But before they can continue training and continue their conversation, they are called back to the nest, which is of course the real world location of St. Michael's Mount. Lo Sang is holding a meeting with everyone here as they have learned that Madame Janae has captured a couple of their people including Falu and Emile from season one. We also meet a brand new character here at the meeting known as Jacinta, who I am very suspicious of right off the bat here in the first episode. She seems very hesitant about sending in people to save their friends and is also against a lot of Lo Sang's decisions. She just seems a bit shady to me. Could she be a spy for Madame Janae or even the corrupt part of the CRM? Or will she just end up betraying the nest in the end? I guess we will have to wait and see, but I just know for sure that she cannot be trusted. Daryl enters the meeting and tells them that they need to send a group to save their people, as Madame Janae is ruthless and she'll just kill those people if she gets no information out of them. Afterwards, Lo Sang shows Daryl his Tonka, which is a Buddhist way of teaching. He then asks Daryl how long he intends on staying there, and Daryl says as long as it takes for him to find another ride back home. Daryl then goes outside and meets with Isabel and tells her that they have asked him to stop training Laurent, as it is distracting him and could put the idea of violence in his head more than it should be. Daryl then starts wondering about the people he left behind back home, and wonders if they still think about him, which is where we cut right to Carol as we pick up with her basically where we left off, as she takes Daryl's bike and tracks down the location where he last was. And when she gets there to ask questions, she puts on that smile to pretend to just be a nice lady, something we have seen her do for years now a wolf in sheep's clothing, basically. This is also, of course, that same location where Carol told Daryl over the radio that somebody had came back. Now, she likely was speaking of Rick, especially after the ones who live came out, but I still have questions about that, because if she was talking about Rick, she wouldn't have so much trouble getting to France, as Rick had all that access to the helicopters, so she would have just been provided one. At least, you'd think that would be the case. She eventually has to reveal her true self as she takes back Daryl's crossbow from one of the guys and holds them all at gunpoint until they tell her that he was taken away on a boat, along with all of the walkers that the French actually came there for, and they point her towards the bay where the boat was seen. 
But of course, when she gets there, there is nothing but old run down boats. As they said back at the outpost, they have only ever seen that one boat and now it's gone. Lucky for Carol though, as she drives off to search for another plan to get to France, she hears and then sees a plane flying overhead. She looks at it a bit too long though and ends up crashing her car, but she just follows the plane back to where it lands on foot afterwards. Which leads into what is now nighttime as she sneaks across the borders of the property and then pretends to get stuck in one of the guy's traps to get inside his place and hopefully get a plane ride from him eventually, which she starts off doing successfully as she draws him out and has him agree to at least take her in for the night to patch up from the accident. And this new character that we meet here is known as Ash. Ash lets Carol stay the night at his place, but in his barn. And as they walk towards it, Carol starts to get flashbacks to when Sophia walked out of Herschel's barn as a walker, and right before Daryl volunteered and then put her down. So clearly, Carol is still struggling from her past, and it's just unfortunate because she has lost every single child she has ever tried to look over, whether it was Sophia or Henry. Anyways though, after staying the night, she asks Ash if he can help her fix her car up that she crashed. He agrees to do so when he takes his plane out later. He then leaves and goes to his greenhouse in a rush though, which causes a lot of suspicions. So when he does take his plane out, Carol starts looking around his place before the power goes out, which in turn unlocks the door to the greenhouse, where she finds a grave or memorial for Ash's son. But the power also unlocked and opened the front gates, allowing walkers to enter the premises. So when Ash gets back, he's obviously not very happy with Carol, but after they take out the walkers and then clean them up, and Carol leaves him to be at his son's grave, they then sit down for dinner that night, where she again is reminded of her past, with the flowers on the table being the same flower that Daryl gave to her when they were searching for Sophia. Ash wonders if Carol has anyone waiting for her, which is where where she starts talking about Ed, her husband, that we all remember from season one of the original show. An abusive and horrible person. But then she keeps going and forms a fake story about how Ed and Sophia left for France before the outbreak and she has not seen them ever since, which is why she is actually there with Ash, so that she can get a plane ride to France to look for Sophia. Again, showcasing that manipulative side of Carol that she always brings out when need be. We then cut back to Daryl in France as he walks in to meet with Lo Sang as he spars with a Joe staff in the art of Aikido the same exact style that Morgan Jones uses. But of course, Morgan uses a bow staff instead of a Joe staff. Daryl says that he's going along with the group to get their people back from Madame Genet's transport. Lo Sang does offer Daryl a spar here, but he refuses. Now, I've got a feeling that Lo Sang is gonna end up having some pretty cool action scenes this season based off of this one sequence alone. Cutting back to Carol as she makes her way off of Ash's property, but then he pulls up beside her with a changed mind as he then agrees to fly her to France. The kindness of strangers that Carol was talking about earlier in this episode seems to have worked out here, 
But as it reaches nighttime and a storm starts brewing, Ash's generator explodes due to lightning, allowing an entire horde of walkers to take over the place. So they have to take the risk and take off now or they will never get the chance to. Meanwhile, Daryl and the group from the nest have prepared a trap for Madame Janae's transport. But as their vehicles approach, the explosives do not go off. So Daryl and the group just go in guns blazing taking out Madame Janae's men and freeing the prisoners. But as they escape before any reinforcements can arrive, Daryl comes face to face with Madame Janae. So he reloads his gun and prepares to put her down for good. But the explosives finally go off behind Daryl, allowing Madame Janae to escape. Finally, cutting back to Carol and Ash as they fly through the storm and towards their new destination in France. Ash tells Carol to take a deep breath, the same thing that she heard on her car radio just before she crashed it. As we get a beautiful shot of the plane exiting the storm and flying above the clouds and towards the sunrise, which is where this episode ends off. And overall, I thought that this was a pretty good first episode for this second season. Of course, seeing more of Carol is always amazing, and I cannot wait for her to be reunited with Daryl once again, and hopefully soon. And I'm curious to see what they will talk about when they catch up after all this time. I'm also curious to see where all of these dynamics and relationships go as for the main characters with all of these new characters. And of course, where all of this will end up leading. I enjoyed this episode personally, and I thought the action was great, and of course, those types of flashbacks are always so cool to see. Now, they may not be anything new, but just remembering what this universe used to be like, and how these characters have progressed, is always so cool to think about. I think I would give this episode a 7 or 8 out of 10, and I cannot wait for episode 2 next week week. But yeah, that about does it for this episode, from me at least, but of course I would like to hear your thoughts on it as well, so make sure to leave them down below. Apologies for being inactive for a while lately, I have been uploading a lot over on TikTok, so feel free to check us out over there too, especially if you enjoy edits. But now that we have some Walking Dead back in our lives, we are back with the breakdowns once more. And I will also be working on other sorts of videos that are not breakdowns. Anyways though, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed our breakdown and review on this episode, feel free to give it a like. And with that being said, we will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.